Super dope. What made you come to Nebraska? Um, really, Coach Bo. Coach Bo. He was the only coach who really came to my high school for me. Everyone else was like, they'll call. You know, they'll, they'll send some, some mail. But Coach Bo came and pulled me out of art class. I'm never going to forget. So, like, my uh, second half of my um, first semester of my senior year, I had pretty much gotten all my credits to graduate already. So, I'm in, like, bullshit classes all the time. I'm in art. And I get a call on my cell phone, and my art teacher was super cool. She let me pick up the phone, and it was Bo Pelini. He was like, hey, yeah, man, get a pass from class. Come down to the counselor's office. And I had just seen you guys, I think, a couple weeks before, Taylor Martinez had a crazy game against Kansas State where he scored like six touchdowns or something like that. So Nebraska was on my radar. So I was yeah, like, yeah, we got a good team. Magic and then that that's year, when that song that's came That's when y'all lost to Texas in the, the Big Ten, Big 12 championship that year. So, like, you guys were a game away from the national championships. So I was like, you know what? This is a good opportunity for me. Like, Alabama and Auburn, they were lightly recruiting me. They really wanted me to play corner. I wanted to play running back. So, Coach Bo coming in and just telling me, like, hey, man, I'm not going to tell you you're going to be a starter, but I think you got a special talent, and that's the reason why I came here. We don't come to Alabama, you know, often, but when we do, we don't miss. I remember he said that. We don't miss. And I was like, all right, you're not going to miss with this one. And that's fucking the awesome. rest is, you know, what it is. No, uh, that is uh Bo's the man, bro. Bo, it, he Bo's really the is the fucking man. And he'll yank your hey. I tell you what, you miss an art class in college though. <laughs> hey, For real though, yeah, yeah. Hey, that was that was one thing that stuff that always kind of stuck with me because you know he'd be in like team meetings and talk about like I'm not gonna fucking hold your hand and babysit you guys. Yeah, like you guys are grown men. You need we need to we need to teach you guys, but yeah. you guys need to learn to become grown men because you're not going to do, you're not going to be a some of the time guy. Right. It's either all the time or your ass isn't playing on Saturday. Right. He's like, you're not going to pick and choose when to show up. It's not just come play Saturday, come play when we practice. You're either going to be the same person in classroom or you're not going to be here. I think that's what I appreciated about him the most is the growth that I saw in all of my friends. So ironically, Josh Mitchell and Kenny Bill are both in that group chat. Some of my closest friends today. But when they came to Nebraska, when they first got there, they were shitheads. <laughs> yeah. You know, they were immature, um, a little entitled, you know, a little bit, and didn't want to go to class or any of that stuff. Bo, like you said, he didn't hold their hands. Like, they grew as men because of Bo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that maybe the fans who just see him on Saturday, they don't understand. He held people accountable. He really was. He was like a second father almost, and he wasn't going to baby you. He was going to help you grow, which growth is never comfortable. Yeah. So, Focus on the process. Compete every day. Every that day. was his biggest quote that he had hanging around everywhere. And as cliche as it is, it's just like, it's just true. unfortunately, it's the fucking truth, Fucking man. true, bro. You talk about... Um, I want to go back to you speaking about, uh, actually, I don't want to go to that pivot yet. I want to go to uh, the development you've had throughout the years. Getting to this point, you've spoken on like now you, you're you at a place where you feel like you, you understand third down, you understand schematics, mm -hmm. you understand all this stuff in the football world. Talk about your development from when you first came into the league to where you're at now, whether it's mentally, spiritually, physically, football, whatever it is, because you're somebody I've always like respected and admired from afar like obviously you know that we're boys we're we're you know we're good friends mm -hmm. some would say um acquaintance but but for real like you're my boy and you're also somebody like i, I always try to like tell because you never like tell your friends that they're like mentors of yours right mm -hmm. it's always got to be seen as somebody who's either older where you want to be older right. above you in some kind of way but you've always been somebody that's like indirectly mentored me from afar because Same. i keep my eye on you and what you do because you you always seem to be in a good place yeah talk about that development shoot it's funny you say i always seem like i'm in a good place because i'm not not always you know what i mean which everyone deals with stuff yeah but uh shoot i'll start with detroit man when i first got to detroit i had a really good rookie year and um, I put a lot of expectations on myself, but that city is tough with the expectations. So, like, getting hurt my second year for the entire season. You were drafted in the second round, right? Second round, okay. second round. So, first round, rookie year was solid. Second year, I got hurt pretty early, which Detroit is kind of a woe is me, you know, a town sometimes where, mm -hmm. like, when they're up, they're up. When they're down, they're down, you know, which they've been down for a little while now. <laughs> so, um, for me, that was, a, that was a really – that was a low point for me, you know, in my career where it was a lot of doubt started to, you know, started to creep in for me. Like, is he going to be able to be the same player after his injury again? Can he, can he stay healthy? Can he be every down back? And those were a lot of the things that I fought when I first got to Nebraska. So, you know, as people, doubt is like always stronger than confidence for some reason. 
You know, for some reason, we're so much quicker to like believe the negative as opposed to the positive. And for, I'll say between like 2016 through 2017, I had kind of become that person. I kind of lost my way of seeing the opportunity as opposed to the obstacle, you know? Mm. But I'll say the development started to happen when I started to realize who you are sometimes is who you are all the time. And I'll, and I'll plug Bo again. It's about the process. I hope you guys like this clip. If you want to continue to be for the boys, you need to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and check out our playlist. We have all the links right here on the screen. As always, biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Also, go check out the full episodes, but always for the boys.